Not having a niche is one of the things that held me back for the longest time. I found that I struggled with having almost too many ideas. I've got too many passions. So I would maybe spend a year doing illustration and then I'd be like, hmm, it's not making me enough money or I'm not quite feeling it. Maybe I want to do graphic design, logo design, identity, branding, photography, video. I just kind of went back and forth and I just spun my wheels basically. I never was able to sort of create anything consistently. I was just constantly changing. I can't have an Instagram profile with illustration one month and photography another month. I explored quite a few different ways to find your niche. So I'm gonna go through those and then what I'm gonna do is show you what I do now and the process that I go through. You might find that you have too many ideas. You might find that you can't come up with any ideas. Maybe you decided that your niche is gonna be craft beer and coming up with ideas is just an absolute chore and you're really struggling. That's kind of a, a signal really that craft beer is not for you. Not having a niche means you won't stand out from your competition. A lot of the big creators are going to have quite broad niches. They've been able to work themselves up to that. You'll probably find if you look at the beginning that they were focused on something. You know, PewDiePie might have had computer games, which is quite broad, but he, he's always sort of like focused a little bit on the, the sort of like the we play side of things. And it was sort of like he bring his personality and the way he'd overreact to things. And that almost like carved his little bit. If your niche is marketing, you could, there's, there's all sorts of mark. It could be Facebook ads, it could be Instagram, all sorts of things. But you could possibly branch down marketing to being only social media adverts or something and, and cone it down that way. But if you are going to compete in just the, the marketing landscape, if you almost you, you can't stand out. It's really hard to compete with the big people, basically. They've got the big team that is able to push out all the content and to get attention easily. Whereas you're not, you know, you're coming in brand new, fresh eyed. You can't compete with that. So the best thing for you to do is just to sort of really cone it down and get very, very specific. In marketing, it could be copywriting. It should be copywriting for social media or copywriting for social media of green grocers, copywriting for social media for beer breweries, something like that. And you, you know, you'd focus on learning the language of craft beer and knowing how to target people who like craft beer. And that can be your niche. And you're going to find that you can be found a lot easier that way. It's hard to rank for marketing. It's a lot easier to rank for craft beer copywriting. The strength in a niche. Get a niche. One thing a lot of people are worried about when they kind of get a niche is like, are they going to be stuck in that niche? The short answer is no. You're not going to be stuck there at all. If you look at any of the big creators, they may well have started off with a small niche, but they've kind of grown into something bigger. Uh, Vanessa Lau, who we'll talk about a little bit later on in the video, she started off by building her Instagram. She noticed that she was quite good at that, and she started marketing that and selling that service. And then she moved everybody over to YouTube and started doing some YouTubey stuff. And now. I think she's sort of focused on coaches, which is very similar to someone else called Rachel Bell, who's had a very, very similar journey. Early on in her career, she focused on organic Instagram growth. And then she's now also at the coaching. She's got the online coach accelerator, online coach university. She just focuses on coaches. You're not stuck when you're in a niche. You can always sort of pivot when you get to the top. And you know, if you're that, that example we were talking about earlier where you're doing copywriting for craft beer, you can eventually sort of push that up to copywriting for beer companies, copywriting for food and drink companies, and you can come back out up to the top of there. Or you might find that you can just shift it along. So you can do it for beer companies, you can probably do it for food, you can probably do it for just general items, shopping stuff, you can then move over to sort of beauty or, or you know, or whatever. It's, it's easier to pivot at the top there. You can you have the influence, you've got the collateral, you can move across a lot easier. You can create separate channels. Pedro Jet, one of my favorite video YouTubers, he just does video pretty much, but he's sort of like dabbling into cameras and just general tech, bags, backpacks, tripods as well. There's lots of things in the video sort of landscape you can play with, but he's also started up now a vlog channel and he's able to express himself however he sees fit now on that separate channel. It doesn't dilute his video and tech stuff. He just puts the other stuff away. Like Donald Miller and the story brand, if you confuse, you lose. If you confuse, you'll lose. I've done illustration and video and photos. When I was building momentum with those specialisms, I got a couple of clients here. They still want design doing or animation doing or photography doing or video. That's cool, that's fine. But uh, you know, I'm turning down jobs and saying, no, I'm only doing branding now. I'm only doing specifically branding for creators. I'm doing that industry now and an odd thing happens. They offer me more money to come away from the branding side of things. I'm gonna be very, very specific. 
So in answer to the question, no, you won't get pigeonholed, you won't get stuck, you can always pivot later on. It's just incredibly powerful to have a niche. So jumping in now on how to actually find your niche, there are several ways you can do that. And we'll start with the Gary Vee one. He gets this guy into his car, and he just says, you are the niche. Your niche is you, the human. You need to be as broad as possible, but fully you, which becomes your niche. That's me. Which is an interesting perspective, but it's very hard to rank for you. I can't really rank for Chris Hart. I mean, I can, because there's not much competition there. I can rank for Crystal Pulse. There's not much competition, but there's, there's absolutely no search volume. I don't want people to find me for my name right now. I kind of want them to find me for branding and creator branding and branding for YouTube. So those are going to be my sort of long tail keywords, so to speak. Gary is able to rank for his name, Gary V, because of the status he's built for himself now. And he's able to sort of comment on anything. He can talk about cannabis stocks. He can talk about Tesla. He can talk about social media, sports cards, wine. It doesn't really matter. It's always sort of like it's his opinion. And you know you can draw concentric circles around there, and, and that's the niche. And I think that does work, but you've got to build your name first. And the only way I can really recommend to build a name is to start off with a niche, and then build it from there. So I don't know if that's aimed at a more intermediate audience, but when I was looking for how to sort of tips and tricks on how to build my niche, I came across that video, and it wasn't helpful. You know, I'm just not going to draw people in for my name yet. I mentioned those concentric circles there. There's quite a nice one with the icky guy concept. You draw four circles and they'll be, you know, at the top here, what do you love doing? And you'll list all sorts of things that you love doing. And then over to the right will be, what are you actually good at? And is there any links here between, you know, what you're great at, what you love? At the bottom, it'd be like, will people pay you for it? Can you profit from any of those ones? Are you able to draw a little bit more of a link? And then the last one here is what the world needs. And I struggle with this one quite a lot because in some respects, the world doesn't necessarily need what I'm putting out in the world. It doesn't really need branding. I mean, branding is very helpful. It can make or break a business, but does the world need it? Is it solving world hunger? No. Do we need beauty in the world? Yeah, kinda. It's a, it's a hard one for me. I, I would always kind of like think of it too literally almost. And the icky guy thing never really worked, but it's an interesting concept. I recommend you definitely do that and, and think about what you like and love, what you're good at, what you could make money from, and if the world needs it. If the world does need it, then you can really you know, just double down on that. And I think, well, you know, whatever links in the middle here, it's gonna be really powerful, but it does lend itself to the other method. There is Think Media and Sean Cannell. They've kind of almost removed the what does the world need and they've kind of eloquently just given it the profit, proficiency and passion. And it's just three concentric circles. What are you passionate about? What do you love? Are you any good at it? Are there any links here? And then that last one, can you profit from it? A lot easier to get to something that way. Then next is the, the, the method that Vanessa Lau goes with, which I really like as well. Use the previous concentric circles thing and if you've got down to five take your five and can you write about all of those can you come up with 10 to 15 content ideas can you come up with 10 to 15 video ideas for any of these if one of them's like a lot easier that's quite a good indicator that maybe you should go with that one if you find that one of them you're just really struggling they're a bit blasé or they're a bit bland and boring then maybe stay away from that one you can just keep that one as maybe a bit of a hobby you know i'm doing branding and creator stuff i love video i'd really like to review cameras and equipment and tripods and camera bags i can't quite see a way it'll fit just yet i mean it certainly would be useful to give my opinion on these things but for now i need to primarily just focus on branding and how to do that and maybe we'll move into content creation a little bit later on but for now focusing on the branding thing and the other stuff i'm just gonna have to sort of get and do myself um, i may well put the videos out so you've got your three and hopefully one of those has been harder than the others and one of them has been very easy and the one that's very easy i recommend you go with that one and then there's sort of my method the one that i've been using with my clients to burrow down on what their niche is and it's kind of almost an amalgamation of all of these really I may have gone through the icky guy and the Think Media one and Vanessa Lau's approach. Come with your three to four ideas that you would like to do. And then can you write about them for 10, 15 minutes? Write why you're good at it. Are you any good at it? Why you? Why should you be the authority in this sector? Can you think of any reasons why you shouldn't do it? Can you talk yourself out of that idea? What unfair advantages have you got? For me, a lot of the time, one of my unfair advantages is I've got a lot of time. I don't mind going stupidly deep on a subject and working out all of it and then I just share this knowledge with people. I will read, listen to audiobooks all day long. I get up early and I just read and I create and I design things and I, 
I research yeah and I'll, I'll obsess about a subject and I'll just go all in on it and so one of my benefits to me doing branding is I do love branding I've got tons of books that were just on branding I didn't even realize I loved branding that much until I looked around and was like wow I've got 15 books on just branding and market whatever 10 minutes on each of these segments and I almost definitely have found that one of them you're writing about 10 minutes and it gets to the 10 and it's time to move on to the others you've kind of got loads more to say that's a really good indicator and you want to kind of bear that one in mind but force yourself to do 10 minutes on all the other ones you know if you've got three or four or five ideas it could take you an hour to do this i, I found it just is very very successful and you'll almost definitely know what you want to do after this so by the end of that exercise you might find you've got like a, a messy page condense that down into maybe like some bullet points get the two or three ideas if you're still struggling Hopefully you just got one though. And so maybe just give yourself a fresh piece of paper and just give you some clean bullet points. Why you should do it, what your strengths are, what you can do with it. Five to 10 content ideas, what your first videos are. Could you create a course around it? Get all those and get them nice and neat. I would say it took about 10 years really to get to my niche where I'm happy now. Um, I was able to put out 52 pieces of content back to back on Instagram. One of the quickest ways I've found to sort of narrow down my client's niches is to ask, if I stopped you in the street, what would you be able to give me a two hour lecture on? Could you do a TED talk on something? What is that thing? Write that down. Maybe there's three or four things. Write all those down, give those all headings, and then start writing about each of those for 10 minutes. All right, guess that's it. Thanks so much for your time. Hopefully see you soon. Drop me a comment below on if this helped. Did you find your niche? Do you need help finding your niche? Have you got three or four ideas? Maybe I can help you with that. Drop in the comments below. I'll find you somewhere, DM you. Have a little bit of a video chat maybe. Whatever you fancy.